Many companies are overspending on their data infrastructure. I know I've seen plenty of them. Some who are obviously smaller are spending tens of thousands, others hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on data infrastructure that's often poorly optimized and built and could be possibly costing them twice as much as they should be spending, if not more. And don't just believe me, here's a great article if you missed it about someone who accidentally saved their company half a million dollars simply by fixing a few configurations on Snowflake. And this is happening everywhere. There are so many ways companies are wasting money uh, on their data infrastructure. And I wanted to talk about it today in ways that you can check to make sure your team is fully optimizing their data infrastructure spend so that way you can focus more on actually delivering value and not having to explain why you're spending $500,000 on data infrastructure. Now, before diving too deep into that, I just wanna say, hey there, everyone. Thanks so much for joining the studio. My name is Ben Rojan, AKA the Seattle Data Guy, now in Denver. If you don't know me, um, I work as a data engineering and infrastructure consultant. And prior to this, I worked at Facebook full time for uh, three years. And before that, some startups uh, and in healthcare. What I find interesting about costs in the data space is I once was talking to an engineer who told me that they didn't want to consider the cost as one of essentially their requirements. They didn't want to be inhibited by whatever costs were going to be incurred, which is strange to me because at the end of the day, whether you're building a bridge or writing software, cost is always a factor. What materials you can use, how safe and how long something will last, how well you know you abstract and build things into your software, all will likely be impacted somewhat by cost. Yes, there's obviously timelines and everything else that are involved, but costs play a major role in how we build what we build. In fact, before I start almost any project with my clients, one of the conversations I have is one, how much do you wanna spend in terms of infrastructure up front? And then also how much do you wanna spend monthly? Now, obviously everyone wants to spend zero, but that's not going to happen. There's always a trade-off. You know, if you use an open source solution, more than likely, you are going to pay for it in other ways, such as monthly maintenance and time. So there is generally always a trade-off that you will have. Sometimes it will be worth it to go the open source route. And sometimes maybe a vendor solution makes the most sense, but you need to go through the process of thinking through, do we build it? Do we use open source? Do we buy something off the shelf? But let's say you've already built your solution and now you're spending way too much and you're not sure how to fix it. Let's go over a few key places that I constantly see people spend way too much money on their data infrastructure. And as you're kind of going through this, you can kind of just go through this chart that I'm gonna to put together. Basically, this is what I used to do uh, when I would look for uh, optimizations in terms of time when things were not on the cloud and your only concern was mostly uh, how long your performance was, like how long was a ETL process running, but you can now add in uh, cost as well to this. So you can go through the process of first figuring out what the problems are that are causing these costs. One of those things might be the fact that you're spending so much on a solution that it might as well be the cost of an employee. And that sounds a little bit crazy, but I recently had a client, and again, they were quoted nearly $200,000 on a solution to ingest data from some sources that were really, again, one source. It was just one real database, but that's what the solution costs. Obviously, the solution made a lot of sense early on when they were paying for um, some APIs and smaller data pools. But as soon as they connected the application, suddenly their bill ballooned upwards. They were quoted $200,000 a year just to pull data from a database. Something that any of us probably out there could write in terms of writing the connector and just pulling the data. Yes, there's other things you have to write, such as making sure you're only pulling in the most recent data and there, there are little things in there. But the fact that they were spending essentially $200,000 just to pull that data over was a little shocking. Now, in this case, luckily we found a solution because they didn't want to hire a whole other employee to build something similar. And in this case, it was Estuary, which was why, for those of you who do know, I did become an advisor with Estuaries because of this specific project where they helped me essentially reduce this company's bill by about 80%. And we did it all within about the span of a month. But yeah, as we were going through again, that list that I talked about, we basically broke down all these processes, you know, ingesting data from API one, two, three, database and like put that cost there where you know you're basically spending 200k and we're like well that's clearly where we're going to focus this whole process and that's what you're going to do you're going to go through the process of listing out what you could actually uh, improve on what are the different steps in the process um, is there a transformation that you can improve is there a dashboard that's costing you a lot of money if you list all that out this, this is a great way to keep track of what's costing what especially since most companies won't give you this information or at least will make it hard for you to get to you'll likely have to kind of 
do some level of parsing it out. Next, another problem that I constantly see companies deal with is the view on view on view on view problem. Now, again, if you remember this chart, what's interesting here is you will both see that the cost is generally very expensive by the processes that are connected to this, as well as the time is very poor generally. The performance, you know, it takes like 10 minutes for people to get dashboards uh, to return back to them. And this is one of the things that I'll tell people. If they tell me their dashboards are taking 10 minutes and they're spending a lot of money, I'll often say I can kill two birds with one stone. Because generally, the issue here is you've built some sort of view on view on view system where it's just taking way too long to process all this data. And on top of that, every time you're processing it, you're taking 10 minutes to run all of these views, meaning you're paying for all of this versus pre-running data. And yes, there are trade-offs here where your data maybe won't be as up to date if you're going directly to the raw state and there's some streaming involved. Sure. But... Is that necessary? So it's one of those questions that I often ask people, you know, do you really need this data to be live? What decisions are you making? Really having to understand what they're trying to do because they need to understand that they're paying for the fact that this data is live. And do they want that? Or do they need to look for a different solution to give them that ability? It's just, there's so many options here, but in general, I found if there's a view on view on view situation that's costing a ton of money, more than likely you can fix it by building some more permanent data models um, or tables that actually sit there to support these needs. Now, with that, uh, that also adds to the fact that real time, I just brought that up, is expensive in the cloud. It really is. It's, it's not just the fact that it's technically hard. And honestly, there's a lot of solutions, again, I brought up Estuary, that make it very easy. But even in the case of Estuary, where we've used it, we had to kind of turn off, in some cases, their real time effect because we didn't need it and we were having to pay for it. Not from Estuary, mind you, but from Snowflake, because that's how Snowflake works. If you're loading data into Snowflake, every time you tell Snowflake to turn on, it generally will run for a minute and you will pay for that minute. So the way to think about this is if you have, let's say, 60 tasks and you want all of that to be fired whenever that task is, is live, great. But if it's perfectly broken down for every minute in that hour, you're going to pay for a whole hour of Snowflake. Whereas if let's say you batch all 60 of those tasks at the end of the hour, you will likely pay, and it only takes a minute to run, for one minute of Snowflake, costing you 1 60th the cost of what it costs you to do, you know, every one time, every minute uh, as you're trying to load that data live. So that's the difference. Like if you're spending too much, and this is something that I've done as well, if you're seeing that you're spending too much because you're doing real time data and every time that data fires, you are paying for it, Consider batching your data. I get that batch is boring, but it also, one, is <laughs> it works, and two, ensures that you're not paying as much. Again, if you're on Snowflake. More than likely, if you're on-prem, you can probably uh, get away with this as long as your system uh, requirements can handle it. But yeah, real time is expensive, and I don't mean technically. Technically, we're starting to get to a point where I think companies and solutions exist that make it easier, but you'll often pay for it somewhere else. So just consider that as you're doing real time. Again, we kind of have this list of things. You'll, you'll see like the ingestion, this 200K, uh, maybe real time you're spending 50 extra K because it was a real time pipeline versus the batch pipeline that's 10K or 5K or 1K. And then maybe your dashboard's costing you $30,000. Um, I've often seen people spend a ton, especially dashboard solutions that are like connected to like pull from your data, like raw. I've seen, I've actually had, it's just funny that I, I think about this. I've actually had uh, a vendor tell a client of mine that, hey, the best way to set up our dashboarding solution is to set up connected to your data raw and like just do all the processing in our dashboarding solution, which it's like, hey guys, like I get what you're saying. Like in theory, that gives you this ability to granularly look at the data. Great, but they will pay for that. And they didn't tell them that. They're not gonna tell them that, hey, Snowflake will charge you every time or whatever solution you're using that's in the cloud, you're gonna pay for it. And so it's very important to realize that especially if you're using something like Snowflake, Databricks, something where it is pay for consumption, there is this trade-off that as you're consuming, it's it's geared to be more expensive if you were to use it, the equivalent almost as a database where it just exists all the time. Finally, the topic that I've talked about a few times now on this channel is data modeling, which I need to do more of. Do expect that soon, probably in January. But bad data models, and I like that someone posted this, can cost companies a lot of money. Um, whether that's because you've just set them up um, and how they build themselves is incorrectly uh, done, or maybe not incorrectly, but maybe you recreate the table every time. 
which can be fine, like it's an easy way to solve a problem if your tables are small. But as soon as your tables start getting big, you need to start thinking about, hey, can we append data? Is a merge faster? Sometimes it's not. Like merge is one of those things where it's like, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not. So it's very important that you think through all of the possible decisions that you make, like, hey, what is the most efficient way to run this script when I'm building the data model? I know that's just building the data model, right? Like that's the physical action of building it. But what about how it is actually modeled? This is where you'll often see people do like Kimball, one big table, all of these different approaches to how you could possibly build your data model. And as per usual, there are trade-offs in all of these. If you do do Kimball, right, there is that cost where it's like, hey, if you have to join, joins are going to be expensive, right? If it's heavily normalized, that is going to likely cost you a little more when people are building things. What I generally see people do uh, in that case is like, they'll generally do a hybrid because there's trade-offs in both cases is like they'll build these normalized tables and then build one big table for the analyst to work with. That's one way you can kind of hopefully either reduce costs and hopefully simplify how people actually work with the data. But even there, you're then committing to building this table, which takes up more storage, which also costs the compute of building the table. And that's why you have this chart that we put together where you will go through and figure out what is actually costing you money. Because if it's table by table, if you go through and you're like, hey, these tables are costing us a ton of money. Is it worth it? You can actually answer that question. But usually people don't do the groundwork of like, hey, what actually exists? What is it costing? Where should we focus our energy? Instead, they'll just take blind shots in the dark because they saw something was expensive one place without thinking about what the trade-offs are. I think that's the biggest thing here for me is like as you're going through the process of trying to save your company money, it's generally all about trade-offs. You know, maybe you don't have real-time data anymore, or maybe you, your data is not as granular in certain parts of your dashboard, but that can lead to these cost savings that you're trying to do. And if you're looking for a data team of experts who have helped a company save hundreds of thousands of dollars, honestly, my goal next year is to save companies over a million dollars of data infrastructure costs. So if you need help, even if it's just a phone call that I can help you in like 30 minutes, give you a few tips or pointers on how I can save your company $50,000, I'd love to take that call. So feel free to set up a meeting with me in the Calendly below. I'd really like to reach that million dollar goal by the end of next year. So if that's something that interests you, feel free to reach out. Now back to the regular programming.